بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Honorable brothers and sisters hopefully youngsters listening at home um it is 7:07 p.m. on Thursday the 9th of April uh, the equivalent of the 16th of Sha'ban which means there are perhaps 13 days or 14 days left until the blessed month of Ramadan meaning there are a maximum of 2 weeks left uh, for Ramadan which is not a long time whatsoever it may seem because most of us will be in isolation, locked down in our homes. It might seem a little bit longer than uh, two weeks in normal times, but it's not long at all. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, we have perhaps more time. Many of us will have more time and uh, more um, capacity to prepare for Ramadan than in other years. So the purpose of this live stream, and this is a live stream which happens every day before Salatul Maghrib, uh, after Salatul Asr, one of its main purposes is to encourage us to take out this time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to recite some Qur'an or listen to some Qur'an to make some dua and to dedicate this time. It's the end of the day. It's a blessed time. Um, especially when the month of Ramadan will come So inshallah we hope to continue this through the month of Ramadan uh, But beforehand let us get into this habit uh, Particularly with our families I know for very young children You know this will be bedtime And especially as Asr gets later But um, those of us uh, who have children Who are old enough and stay awake anyway Until 9 o'clock or later Then I would strongly recommend trying to make this a time uh, as a family to um, dedicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah we will continue our recitation of the blessed and the holy Qur'an. We reached, or my colleague recited yesterday and reached up to verse number 30 of Surah Al-Imran, the third surah in the Qur'an. So we will continue from there as usual. We will recite slowly and uh, the the purpose for that is <clears throat> um, to make it easy for everybody to follow along. And so it becomes an educational thing. So you can, inshallah, try to improve your recitation if you are a beginner in recitation. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> so we're going to start from verse number 31 of the third surah, which is Surah Al-Imran. Uh, three, two, one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ قُلْ أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَى آدَمَ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَآلَ عِمْرَانَ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ ذُرِّيَّةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضٍ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ 
إذ قالت امرأة عمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بطني محررا فتقبل مني فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم فلما وضعتها قالت رب إني وضعتها أنثى والله أعلم بما وضعت وليس الذكر كالأنثى وإني سميتها مريم وإني أعيذها بك وذريتها من الشيطان الرجيم فتقبلها ربها بقبول حسن وأنبتها نباتا حسنا وكفلها زكريا كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا قال يا مريم أنا لك هذا قالت هو من عند الله إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب هنالك دعا زكريا ربه قال رب هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء فنادته الملائكة وهو قائم يصلي في المحراب أن الله يبشرك أن الله يبشرك بيحيى مصدقا بكلمة من الله وسيدا وحصورا ونبيا من الصالحين قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وقد بلغني الكبر وامرأتي عاقر قال كذلك الله يفعل ما يشاء قال رب جعل لي آية قال آيتك ألا تكلم الناس ثلاثة أيام إلا رمزا واذكر ربك كثيرا وسبح بالعشي والإبكار وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله اصطفاك وطهرك واصطفاك على نساء العالمين يا مريم قنوتي لربك واسجدي واركعي مع الراكعين ذلك من أنباء الغيب نوحيه إليك وما كنت لديهم إذ يلقون أقلامهم أيهم يكفل مريم وما كنت لديهم إذ يختصمون إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة من بكلمة من اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة 
وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين ويكلم الناس في المهد وكهلا ومن الصالحين قالت رب أنا يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون ويعلمه الكتاب والحكمة والتوراة والإنجيل ورسولا إلى بني إسرائيل أني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم أني أخلق لكم من الطين كهيئة الطير فأنفخ فيه فيكون طيرا بإذن الله وأبرئ الأكمه والأبرص وأحيي الموتى بإذن الله وأنبئكم بما تأكلون وما تدخرون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لآية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ومصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ولأحل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآية من ربكم فاتقوا الله وأطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صراط مستقيم فلما أحس عيسى منهم فلما أحس عيسى منهم الكفر قال من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله آمنا بالله واشهد بأننا مسلمون ربنا آمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِدِينَ إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ وَمُطَهِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ومطهرك من الذين كفروا وجاعل الذين اتبعوك فوق الذين كفروا إلى يوم القيامة ثم إلي مرجعكم فأحكم بينكم فيما كنتم فيه تختلفون فأما الذين كفروا فأعذبهم عذابا شديدا في الدنيا والآخرة وما لهم من ناصرين وأما الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فيوفيهم أجورهم والله لا يحب الظالمين ذلك نتلوه عليك من الآيات والذكر الحكيم إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون 
الحق من ربك فلا تكن من الممترين فمن حاجك فيه من بعد ما جاءك من العلم فقل تعالوا فقل تعالوا ندع أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نبتهل فنجعل لعنة الله على الكاذبين إن هذا لهو القصص الحق وما من إله إلا الله وإن الله لهو العزيز الحكيم فإن تولوا فإن إن الله عليم بالمفسدين قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون يا أهل الكتاب لم تحاجون في إبراهيم وما أنزلت التوراة والإنجيل وما أنزلت التوراة والإنجيل إلا من بعده أفلا تعقلون ها أنتم هؤلاء حاججتم فيما لكم به علم فلم تحاجون فيما ليس لكم به علم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون ما كان إبراهيم يهوديا ولا نصرانيا ولكن كان حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين إن أولى الناس بإبراهيم للذين اتبعوه وهذا النبي والذين آمنوا والله ولي المؤمنين ودت طائفة من أهل الكتاب لو يضلونكم وما يضلون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون يا أهل الكتاب لم تكفرون بآيات الله وأنتم تشهدون يا أهل الكتاب لم تلبسون الحق بالباطل وتك تمون الحق وأنتم تعلمون وقال الطائفة من أهل الكتاب آمنوا بالذي أنزل على الذين آمنوا وجه النهار وجه النهار واكفروا آخره لعلهم يرجعون ولا تؤمنوا إلا لمن تبع دينكم 
قل إن الهدى هدى الله أن يؤتى أحد مثل ما أوتيتم أو يحاجوكم أو يحاجوكم عند ربكم قل إن الفضل بيد الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله واسع عليم يختص برحمته من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم ومن أهل الكتاب من إن تأمنه بقنطار يؤده إليك ومنهم من إن تأمنه بدينار لا يؤده إليك إلا ما دمت عليه قائما ذلك بأنهم قالوا ليس علينا في الأميين سبيل ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون بلى من أوفى بعهده واتقى فإن الله يحب المتقين إن الذين يشترون بعهد الله وأيمانهم ثمنا قليلا أولئك لا خلاق لهم أولئك لا خلاق لهم في الآخرة ولا يكلمهم الله ولا ينظر إليهم يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم وإن منهم لفريقا يلوون ألسنتهم بالكتاب لتحسبوه من الكتاب وما هو من الكتاب ويقولون على ويقولون هو من عند الله وما هو من عند الله ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون ما كان لبشر أن يؤتيه الله الكتاب والحكم والنبوة ثم يقول للناس كونوا ثم يقول للناس كونوا عباد الله من دون الله ولا ثم يقول للناس كونوا عبادا لي من دون الله ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون ولا يأمركم أن تتخذوا الملائكة والنبيين أربابا أيأمركم بالكفر بعد إذ أنتم مسلمون آه الحمد لله Alhamdulillah, we just recited up to the end of Surah 80 from Surah, uh, up to the end of verse number 80 from Surah Al-Imran. Sorry, my, my mind is working a little bit slow today. You may have noticed I just made a mistake even though I was reciting, looking inside, subhanAllah. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا That uh, the human being has been created weak. So yes, Alhamdulillah, we recited up to the end of verse number 80 from Surah Al-Imran and inshallah tomorrow we will continue from verse number 81 from Surah Al-Imran. Jazakumullahu khairan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept my and all of your recitation and listening to the Qur'an and uh, grant us all the tawfiq to recite the Qur'an regularly 
make it a part of our lives and to grant us the tawfiq to uh, practice the instructions and guidance which he has given us in the Quran. Amin. Moving on, honorable brothers and sisters, um, the Adhan for Maghrib will be at 7.50. Uh, inshallah, I hope many of us will be fasting as we have been recommending from the beginning of Sha'ban. The month of Sha'ban is a month for fasting. The Prophet Sallallahu used to increase his fasts in the month of Sha'ban. And after the month of Ramadan, the most fasting that he would do is reported to be in the blessed month of Sha'ban, which we are in. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said that one of the three most accepted readily accepted du'as is the du'a made by the fasting person and in one narration he said at the time of breaking his fast so that is one of the key reasons why right now in Shaban and also in the month of Ramadan you will find ourselves and many many imams masajid and so on and so forth using the last moments before the Salatul Maghrib to make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the reasons amongst other reasons as well is that the dua of the fasting person when he breaks or she breaks their fast it is readily accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but remember we spoke about at the beginning of the month that for a dua to be accepted doesn't always or doesn't necessarily mean for you to see the manifestation of that dua or to see the exact precise manifestation of what you asked for immediately in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his divine wisdom uh, grants the acceptance in different forms so if you go back to I think one of the first broadcasts then we discussed that in more detail but as mentioned in the broadcast message um, today we are going to briefly talk about what the actual source or cause of this virus is and what that means for Muslims. So naturally, this being a religious spiritual broadcast um, and me not being a scientist or a journalist, the, the angle that we will discuss this from is not necessarily from a scientific one. Rather, in as far as science is concerned, I will refer you to whoever you know is a qualified and um, respectable and authoritative scientist or expert in the matter. Now, there are many theories out there. Okay, um, one is the the common one, which is uh, what is being um, spoken about pretty much everywhere, that uh, this coronavirus is a disease. Uh, a virus which originates from uh, originates from wild animals and somehow in the wet markets of um, Wuhan in China, uh, human beings contracted it and then they, you know, uh, they spread it from one human to another and now it has taken over the world. There are other theories out there. Um, like, for example, that it was actually not uh, spread from uh, a wet market, rather it was spread from a lab where this virus was being um, investigated, analysed or anything else. And there are uh, theories like the, the issues that we are seeing are actually not by any sort of virus. They are caused by mobile phone masts, by 5G masts in particular. Um, and what we're seeing is the results of radiation and uh, cell poisoning. And uh, so that is a theory. And it's a theory that has received a lot of attention on social media. I've lost count how many times I have received a, uh, a a voice recording of a particular person who is explaining this seemingly in detail. So I will say, uh, so on that front, I will say that um, although I have come across many concerning reports about 5G in general, the idea that everything we're seeing in the world is caused by um, 5G masks um, empirically meaning from what i can see with my own eyes 
um, doesn't seem to make sense um, because those masks are not up in many places where the virus or this illness is widespread. So I'm not convinced by it. Also, um, there are many other reasons for not being convinced by that. But I don't think it'll be long before another theory comes out, blaming it on something else. So what I would say, however, is regardless of what the cause is, if we say for argument's sake that it was man-made or it was spread by, by human accident, not just by people catching it and unwittingly spreading it to others, rather people became exposed to it in some kind of you know, man-made environment, or it is actually cell poisoning from some sort of radiation. Regardless, or it is actually, and this is another theory which I think people were talking about before, that this is actually some kind of um, biological warfare or something like that, um, or it is some plot to cull human beings to make the population more manageable. Um, so these are all different theories. Now, even if one of those theories was to be true, for us as Muslims, that doesn't make that theory or that, uh, that, that, that reality, if it is a reality, somehow above the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what I mean by that is, why do we entertain these theories? Or why, does it, why are we sometimes attracted towards um, conspiracy theories or towards... Uh, the idea that this is actually the doing of a human being and man as opposed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a possibility that for many of us, maybe not all of us, but for many of us, that it is a trick of our nafs or even of shaitan. Why? Because the moment we kind of assume that there is some person or some people sitting somewhere in the world plotting and scheming and doing all of this, it sometimes means that, oh, there's nothing we can do about it. And, uh, you know, you know, this is somebody's planning this, somebody's doing this, you know, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Or sometimes the opposite happens, that we start to think, oh, this is all a man-made thing and we need to expose those people and we need to find out the truth and spread the truth. And I'm not saying the truth is not worth spreading. But whatever the case is, regardless, irrelevant, I mean, ir irrespective of what the reality is, none of this is outside the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is a naturally spread virus from wild animals in wet markets in you know, a, a region of China, or whether it is by some kind of evil, corrupt human being, None of that is above and beyond the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will and command that allows it to spread, regardless of the, 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 the vehicle, the, the way in which it spreads, the way in which calamities happen. It's never above and beyond the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or outside the will and leave and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what that means is, irrespective of all of that, spiritually our efforts and our responsibility and our um, strategy is still the same right uh, for example when uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was up against the quraysh physically in the battle of badr when the muslims were 313 uh, you know scarcely uh, equipped um, weak uh, human beings, uh, Muslims, and on the other hand, you had a thousand or more um, soldiers armed to their teeth for those days. This was man-made, meaning these were human beings in front of them. There was no conspiracy theory here. It was evident that these were human beings, and there was a physical threat, a, a strict, uh, you know, a carefully thought out, a planned. Uh, strategy against them but still they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they still you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent a long time in dua their attention was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his miraculous intervention divine intervention that made the Muslims victorious against this threat 
So even if it was to be some kind of conspiracy, some kind of plot, some kind of human um, scheme or some kind of human accident, or whether it's purely the um, forces of nature, right? Just how, for example, when the people of Yunus alayhi salam, when the punishment came, the punishment came in a natural for meaning. When I mean by natural, I mean something which human beings don't control, something from the environment like winds and rain and water and lightning and, um, you know, thunder and so on and so forth. But again, their reaction and strategy was the same to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his protection and his help and he removed the calamity from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, that فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ فَنَفَعَهَا إِيمَانُهَا إِلَّا قَوْمَ يُونُسْ لَمَّا آمَنُوا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُمْ عَذَابَ الْخِزْيِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَتَّعَنَاهُمْ إِلَى حِينَ That why is there not a nation um, uh, that b believes in Allah, that adopts belief in Allah, and then that belief benefits them in the way that it benefited the people of Yunus. Because when they believed in Allah, when they submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we removed from them the disgraceful punishment and we gave them comfort and ease until a time. Okay, so this is what happened to the people of Yunus. They were in a natural disaster. They were, you know, about to face a, a calamity, right? Um, which was natural, which wasn't caused by any human being. But they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine help came and he removed that uh, punishment from them. Likewise, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Quraysh were physically in front of them to attack and kill them. There was no conspiracy theory. It wasn't 50-50, maybe it's natural, maybe it's man-made. It was clear and evident that the Quraysh were there armed to their teeth to try to finish off the Sahaba. Prophet ﷺ raised his hands to Allah, turned to Allah, and Allah sent his divine and miraculous help. And that is what saved the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in. So the point being... Um, if you are a journalist, then by all means, and you have, you know, actual means of research to, at your disposal, and you are actually trained and qualified and have the expertise to do research, then by all means, that is a noble pursuit, especially in the modern age of, you know, information, you know, where uh, so much information is false. That is a very noble endeavor. If you are qualified to do it, just how right now, you know, if you are a doctor, if you are a nurse, if you are a trained medical professional, then it is a wonderful and noble endeavor to be out there serving people, helping people. But if you haven't got any clue, if you are not trained, then the best thing for you to do is to sit at home and save the medical experts from your own harm, for you, from your own challenges, and that is of you contracting the virus and ending up in hospital. Likewise, if you are not a journalist, if you do not have the skills, if you do not have the training, if you do not have access to the, um, the resources and um, uh, things like that, that you need, then the best thing for you to do is to stay away from social media. Don't post anything because by posting things, you are only adding to the problem. You are causing confusion. You are making it, uh, making the task of genuine journalists and researchers even harder because their valuable voices are being lost in the noise that you and I put out. Okay. So, uh, yes, if that applies to you, then mashallah, barakallahu fikum. May Allah give you tawfiq, increase you in khair. Otherwise, the best thing to do is to stay away from all of from forwarding to very simply put to avoid forwarding and spreading any message whatsoever, whatsoever, even that hadith, even that dua, right, which you're not sure of the authenticity because you haven't opened Sahih al-Bukhari to check and it wasn't shared with you with, you know, uh, by somebody who you 100% know and trust, then don't even forward that. Because even that is adding, you know, unnecessary noise. Most probably all those people you are going to forward it to, they already received it. If they haven't already received it, then they're going to receive it from somebody else. If there's a chance, I mean, if it does turn out to be false and wrong, and there's a strong chance of it, even if it's a religious message, 
then don't be the one to take the burden of that sin uh, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kafa bil mar'i kadiban an yuhaditha bi kulli ma sami'a that it is enough for a person to be considered a liar that he forwards and that he conveys everything that he hears. Right. So regardless of whether this is going back to the whole uh, question of what the cause and the source of this coronavirus is or these, you know, these health issues that we are seeing. Uh, if anybody is still saying, oh, is it really a problem? Then just come to London, come to where we are and you can see for yourself, inshallah. Um, if you don't believe that, because I've had people ask me, uh, you know, what is what the media is saying? Is it really true? Are people really dying? Are people really becoming unwell? Um, anyway, so if, if you're in doubt about that, then contact someone who physically lives in a, in a city like London where this is affecting people. Anyway, coming back to it, regardless of what the cause is, the solution in according to the believer is the same. And that is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and convince him. If it is a human being who is causing this or a group of human beings, Allah is more than capable of stopping them, making their plans fail, making their schemes, making their plots. However smart and however wealthy and however powerful they are, they are not beyond the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They might be beyond the power of your and I's, your and my WhatsApp message forwards, but they are not beyond the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it is a natural thing which Allah has sent directly without any human intermediaries, if it is a test which Allah has sent on human hands but in the form of some kind of scheme or plot, or it is a test which Allah has sent through his angels and through his natural um, resources and the environment which is created in the world, that is still not above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our efforts and our focus should be on uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's um, help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection, illness, sickness, life, death, wealth, poverty, fortune. All of this is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we make our efforts wherever we can make our efforts. But before that, after that, and at the same time, we place our hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by trying to please him, by trying to convince him. Allah requires convincing. We need to prove to Allah that we are genuinely humbled by this test that we are genuinely uh, you know uh, we genuinely put our heads down and we re we say we acknowledge that Allah we are nothing and the world is nothing our money our education our qualifications our smartness our wisdom is nothing in front of you and your power and we apologize and we are sorry for all of the heedlessness, for all the time that we have wasted, for all the um, the carelessness that we have been guilty of, for all the greed and for all the, um, you know, uh, uh, for all the, uh, you know, desires and whims that we have spent our life in. And we promise that we will try from today and forever onwards to spend our lives in a way that is pleasing to you by worshipping you as you have asked us to worship you, as by being obedient and careful and and watchful servants that are respectful and, uh, you know, um, helpful to the world around them, to all of your creation. If we convince Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this, then his sunnah is that he will remove the test. Sunnah to Allah, the, the sunnah and the, the, the habit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he removes the test, regardless of whether it comes in the form of a human being's plots and schemes or a natural uh, phenomenon. Inshallah, we'll make a brief dua. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama yambari li jalali wajik wali azimi sultanik. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin abdika wa rasulika wa salli ala al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat. Oh Allah, on this uh, blessed day in the month of Sha'ban, we raise our hands. Many of us are fasting, Allah. We ask you to accept that fast. And oh Allah, we ask you to accept our dua that we make whilst breaking this fast. And oh Allah, we ask you to forgive all of our sins, to mend all of our ways, to cure us all of our illnesses. Brother Muhammad Abdul Rafi has, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali has requested dua for his mother and all the other people who have requested our duas. Oh Allah, we ask you to fulfill their wishes and their desires, their, themselves and their loved ones, however long you have written for them to be on this earth we ask you to get to make that time blessed to give them peace and comfort and safety and good uh, good health and well-being and closeness to you in that time oh Allah we ask you to lift up uplift this 
calamity and this test that you have placed us in from this earth in this world oh allah we ask you to grant us all well-being oh allah we ask you to grant us all safety and security oh allah we ask you all the good things that your beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked from you and we seek your protection from all the things that he saw your protection from wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amin amin inshallah tomorrow before jumu'ah uh, sorry at the time that we usually observe Jumu'ah, meaning straight after Zawal, straight after the Adhan for Dhuhr, there will be a speech, a Friday speech, replacement for the Jumu'ah speech. So please try to join us at that. For that, that's just after one o'clock. Jazakumullah khairan.